Hello, I'm Linda Falcone, and here we are at the Opificio delle Pietre Dure Restoration Laboratory in Florence, and I'm here with Simona Calza, who is a senior conservator here at the Opificio. And before we begin this wonderful tour, Simona, I hello, wanted, Linda. Hello, hello to you all. Um, I wanted to firstly thank Calliope Arts, who is our organizer and sponsor today. Um, for this wonderful opportunity to see some of the treasures that you have in store for us. Yes. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about the Opificio? It's a difficult name for the English-speaking ear, uh, but we're here inside of a fortezza, inside of a fortress. Yes, this is one of the three uh, sites of our institute, the Opificio delle Pietre Dure, and we are in the largest and youngest site in um, a fortress uh, which dates back to the Medician uh, times and um, this is the laboratory of restoration of prints and drawings and we treat uh, objects on paper, parchment and photography. Mm. So items and paper, right? Yes. Do you want to show us the first piece and thanks to the first piece we'll be able to understand the actual phrase Opificio delle pietre dure. Pietre dure are semi-precious stones. Indeed, and Linda. The laboratory and we, was um, was founded by Ferdinando the First, who was and our guests with, at Restoration Conversation will remember Ferdinando the First is the husband of Cristina de Lorraine, who we met last Restoration Conversations at the Museo Galileo. So he founded the Semi-Precious Stones Laboratory and, and um, supported a technique that was Florentine mosaic. Yes, right? yes. So do you want to show us the first yes, piece? Yes, please. Yeah. So um, I'm going to introduce this piece by Marchionni, which is actually a late piece. Um, uh, end of uh, 1700, um, and uh, sorry, eight of 1800. End of 1800. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so this is a typical example of a preparatory drawing mm -hmm. for the making of a painting done with stone, a stone painting which is Commesso Fiorentino okay. and which Opificio delle Pietre Dure at the time of Ferdinando I, so we're talking about 1588, yes. was specialized in. And this is what you're talking about, the um, inlay of semi-precious stones right. just a second ago. So just so our, our audience can understand, yes. stone painting is when the artist takes stones of different grains, of different colors, and inserts a veneer, a very thin layer of stone, into a drawing like this one, right? Yes. Okay. So actually, um, the drawing uh, serves the purpose of um, putting together an idea and uh, making it live through the color mm. and in this case it's a tempera it was nearly always the case sometimes uh, it'd be used uh, watercolor but tempera really was the medium uh, that was used in commesso and once the drawing one to one so we're actually seeing at the real size of the object that would be made later on mm. um, the, the artists would take another paper, a tracing paper, which is uh, see-through, and would place it in certain areas of this painting and retrace the areas that they would feel would go with a special stone. So this would be almost like a tabletop or something that, that could be... Yes, okay. in this case it's not a tabletop, but tabletops were really one of the best objects that were made at the Opificio. This is actually a cabinet door. Okay. Yes, and it's actually quite interesting because it was one of the last pieces before the transition of the Opificio uh, went from building objects in inlay semi-precious 
objects into conservation because it was shown in the Expo in Paris of 1900. Okay, so this is an important transition um, to understand why we're actually in a restoration laboratory today. Yes. So we see Selene who is um, working on her thesis. This is yes. part of her thesis and hello, yes. <laughs> Selene. Uh, you're not mic'd up, but we can see your work, right? And um, you're cleaning as far as I can tell, right? And, and Simona, why don't you show us, I know that this is a couple days labor here. Yes, it is. You might want to get um, this little bowl. What are we seeing here? We're seeing the dirt of centuries. Yes, <laughs> yes. This and much more because this piece has a particular situ conservation situation uh, that you can probably uh, detect uh, by looking at it, meaning that the ground, the major ground, which is dark brown, is actually flaking off and it is going and covering everything else and making this beautiful pot of flowers with a fantastic magnolia up in the center top completely dark. So what Selene is doing is that she is cleaning slowly and under a microscope which is very important. Uh, she's just cleaning what um, the deposit of uh, a century and a half, two centuries has gone on this image plus the migration of the disintegrating of this um, layer of pigment and it is very important that she works under microscopes so as not to take away what actually is original but just what is on top and so the dirt, dirt layers yes. the, the is there varnish on here was there varnish no 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 it isn't and because this it's is tempera work because or? it's tempera okay and because it's a work that um, the artist of the opificio, the workers, would use as a working tool. Okay. This is a working tool. For us, it's a beautiful finished painting, but for them, it was a utensil. Yes, yes. It was yeah, part of incredible. the tools of the trade. Yes. Right? And yes. this is just so we can give. Uh, credit where credit is due. This is actually property of the Opificio della Pietra Dure Museum. Yes. Because the Opificio has, has a restoration a laboratory, but also for those who are in Florence in Via degli Alfani, they have a. It's it's a singular museum, right? One of its kind. Very really. singular museum. The only singular museum because if you go around Italy and especially. Tuscany, you can find examples of pietre dure in the objects, or if you go to the Cappella dei Medici, and uh, which was actually why Ferdinando I, um, in 1588, uh, created the Opificio delle Pietre Dure, was to have uh, workers and artists working just for him just in the process of making La Cappella dei Principi right. in San Lorenzo. So the mausoleum so this is, to the Medici. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. So, um, so that's the origin of our institute. That, yes. It's amazing. It's, Thank it's you, Selena, for showing us your painstaking labor. Uh, Simona, I'm actually going to um, move forward. I, we have a lot to see, yes, yes. right? And if you wouldn't mind, I'm going I know to we're going to talk in a little while, right? Um, but for now, we'll let Letizia Montalbano, thank you. See you later. We'll let Letizia. Hello. Hello, Letizia. Hello. <laughs> um, and it's, I wanted to introduce you first to our guests. Letizia Montalbano is the director of the OP Features Higher Education Research Center. Um, we have Alessia Bianchi here, who is nice working on her thesis, Letizia's student. So, thank you for having us. I'm I'm very excited to see what you have to to talk about today. What are we What are we looking at? These wonderful drawings. Uh, yes, <laughs> uh, we can um, we can see a very important uh, little book 
um, is a, an important part of a graphic collection of a Fondazione Longhi in Florence. Right. It, Do you want me to, um, just so that our guests can understand, Fondazione Longhi, the Longhi Foundation is named for Roberto Longhi, who was a really important scholar of the 20th century, an art historian, specialized primarily in yes. Piero della Francesca and Caravaggio, Caravaggio, among other things. And he and his wife, who many of our viewers might know, Anna Banti. Anna Banti was also an art historian, but she was an author. And um, she wrote a seminal text called Artemisia, which was part yes. biography and part historical novel in 1947. So it was a very early uh, work of literature. But this is part of their collection. And I know you did a, a really yes. large-scale project with the uh, Fondazione yes, Longhi. Yes, because in Fondazione Longhi there is a part of a graphic collection and about 800 um, between uh, drawings uh, and prints. And uh, this is uh, a, a piece very famous because it is a little book uh, by Volterrano. Okay. Uh, at the end of the 18th century, um, 17th, 17th century. 17th century. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, the late Baroque period. Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, we can see uh, many examples of drawings. For example, we have uh, many techniques, uh, many different papers, okay. and uh, a, a little book, very, very interesting. And it, it, it is a study of uh, this uh, student, uh, Alessia, for uh, her thesis. Okay, mm. so she's doing a her thesis. Thesis, yes. thesis, yes. And just so, and Francesco, we're going to, I'm going to invite. Uh, this is Francesco Cacchiani, he's behind the camera. But I want to invite you, Francesco, in so that Letizia can show us this pentimento, so this yes. second thought, and you can go ahead and, and go in there, see if you can find the, the drawing underneath the drawing. So what yes. is happening here, Letizia? Here is a, a typical pentimento of uh, um, using this in this century and but it is particular for these uh, artists and is uh, we have uh, i think uh, only one example in this uh, uh, notebook of this particular kind of uh, of use of he, paper yeah he was saving paper here yes yes yeah. now we are studying the techniques and in particular the damage because uh, we have uh, the paper glued on the on the paper, so mm. the drawings glued and mm -hmm. on the paper, and uh, we must uh, uh, remove from the paper of the of the book. So the, these were placed in a second period in modern times, right? The the notebook was created in modern times. Um, this notebook was created by an engineer captain. Uh, the captain, the name is Santini. Okay. But uh, we don't know when uh, this uh, particular book uh, um, came uh, in the collection. Okay. Mm. Yes. Okay. Mm. So, in terms of technique, just so we can reach an understanding, we have red chalk here. We have red chalk, only red chalk. Mm -hmm. We have uh, black chalk okay. and uh, uh, ink, brown ink, uh, on uh, red chalk. And uh, I think uh, black, uh, black chalk, uh, the same black chalk. And um, they are, uh, or, or in particular, uh, white chalk. White chalk yes. here. Yes, uh, black and white for uh, the drapery. Okay. So, am I right in thinking that these two works in the red chalk are works for, at, from Santissima Annunziata? Yes, uh, these are two yeah. studies for uh, Santissima Annunziata okay. chapel. Yes, yeah. the chapel. Yes. Yeah, I just want to um, share with our guests a reminder because I don't know if they've studied Baroque art recently, yes. the, the late period. But Volterano um, was a very famous painter and fresco artist as fresco, well. Fresco, in particular, yeah, frescos, frescos, yes. And we see his work um, also at the Museo Petraia. We see his work was commissioned by Vittoria della Rovere in um, the Pitti Palace, for Pitti example. Pitti Palace, yes. And um, a lot of our viewers will remember Volterano as 
the man who placed the veil over Artemisia's inclination. <laughs> so that's at Casa Bonarotti. So yes. it's interesting to see some works or some drawings by him personally. And I wanted to ask you specifically about this one, which is very uh, exasperated. Very, yes, very yeah. free, very... I don't know, yes, it might, it's, it's a typical for um, a particular kind, a first step of the drawing, right. the sketch. The sketch. The sketch, okay. the free sketch. Free sketch, interesting. <laughs> and for, uh, uh, for this painter, uh, after the study, the single figure, okay. many, many drawings for one figure, only one figure. Yes. So essentially in terms of artistic process, mm. Petitza, yes. this is the freeform sketch, he's still thinking, he's having a little bit of fun, and that's a more developed more. single figure yes. piece. Yes. Okay. Yes. And Alessia here, she's working with the microscope, right Alessia? Yeah. And so what are you seeing or what is she seeing? Um, well, now I'm seeing under the microscope uh, the materials used by Volteranos uh, draw, and uh, this is in particular is a um, uh, Abeles figure uh, realized by uh, Volterano uh, mm -hmm. for uh, the fresco uh, of Santissima Annunziata. Okay. And just, just sorry. Let me interrupt you. Is her microphone working? Can I get a confirmation? Okay, okay. Yeah, great, okay. Well, uh, in this case, uh, we have uh, uh, iron gel ink and uh, red chalk underline the ink. And uh, Iron ink? Yeah. So an ink made with iron. Yeah. All right, and red yes. chalk. And, and in terms of restoration, are these materials difficult? Uh, yes. Because the ink, uh, the iron ink, uh, is um, acid and um, um, corrode the um, stratification of the um, the, paper, the paper, the fibers, yes, yes. The fibers. Mm. and paper is a headache. Yes, and uh, I'm <laughs> and in the broken, right place to and say and that. broken the paper. Yes. It breaks the paper. Like yes, case. yes. In this okay. case, show show me. Yes. This case is okay. uh, typical. Well, let's see if the camera, Gian Giancarlo, can you? Yeah, there we go. Yes. Okay. Oh. So I see we're seeing some holes, correct? And that's the actual ink, the acidic yes. ink that is eating through the paper. Yes. And how do you correct something like this? We have many treatments, yeah. but uh, um, it's very difficult in this case because we have uh, a, a little piece and uh, uh, two different techniques, and uh, we we must study. She's the earning system. her degree. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's her degree. She's, yeah, yes. exactly. Well, very interesting. Yes. It's it's yes. it's a privilege. It's a privilege yes. to see the drawings before they come become complete works of art yes. within the monumental spaces of Florence. And um, it's uh, very interesting the study of the papers because we have a watermark uh, in the fibers uh, in yeah. the paper and uh, we must study also what kind of watermarks we have in right. every in every right so yes, these papers. would be the watermarks for example um, are, or is that glue no, uh, after when we remove uh, uh, i don't know if we have uh, the, the, the yes uh, uh, okay and we can yeah, show the, yeah. like uh, in this for, in this, uh, for okay. example maybe, can you think, maybe uh, show the camera but i don't know in, if we can uh, put it the other direction think, can you put it the other maybe. direction letizia uh, i don't know whether it's uh, difficult to, to try yeah. Okay. I don't know. Okay. I don't know, I don't know if, Gian if Giancarlo, you can see mm. from that side, mm. but mm, mm, mm. very interesting. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to move on. I know now you have to pass your microphone on to yes, Simona to again. Simona, to Simona. Um, but we're going to, into another century. <laughs> we're going to go towards the 1300s. I'm told. <laughs> Thank you. Change. Change. Yeah. Change. change change our Thank medium you. of knowledge. Thank you. Hello again, Hello. Linda. Hello, yes. <laughs> we're traveling today. I know, we're traveling through the centuries. Yes. We're traveling through time. Here we are. Right? <laughs> With 
a beautiful piece that this is another project of our third student. We have Hello. five students this year, uh, but after five years of schooling, they are uh, doing their final projects. Each one has chosen uh, a topic, yes. and it's going to take them a year and a half to develop oh my. it. My. And so they're halfway through the year and a half. And, so uh, this so is year actually, five. Yes, this is year five. Okay. So, so here we're in the 1300s. We are. I was told. Yes, right? we are. We're and just... and what are we seeing, Simona? Because because I'm sure our audience will be fascinated uh, by these works. This is all part of the same uh, codex. Um, Georgia has already uh, dissembled the, the codex which didn't have an original binding, and this is why it was possible to do so. Um, and she is now conserving each bifolio. And the particular um, thing that we're seeing, we're switching from paper to parchment. Um, so just, just so we can fix these ideas. So what we're looking at here is not paper. It's not. Okay. It's not. So tell us what parchment is. Parchment is the support for writing and painting before paper arrives uh, in Europe. Mm. And uh, here we're looking at a codex um, uh, with laude, so with songs, uh, not written in Latin, but written in vulgar Italian. Mm and belonging to the Biblioteca Nazionale Centrale di Firenze. Okay. So, so very important. It is. Uh, the National Library of Florence, which yes. is Riverside. Yes, right? it we is near it. Santa Croce. Exactly. And near we remember Santa it because Croce. of the flood and for how damaged. Yes, yes, um, of course. It, you know, their works, Yes. thousands and thousands, millions of volumes. Yes, indeed. And yeah. this is one of the other dates which is important especially for the site that we're in today, yes. because the site where we find ourselves today, the Fortezza da Basso, was actually uh, invested as a laboratory uh, in 1966 uh, with the floods, yes. because we needed a space, a huge space, uh, so that uh, we could bring all the pieces that had been damaged by mud yeah. and so collisions just, yes. and yes, just, to this site. Just a reminder about the 1966 flood, we're talking about 600,000 tons of mud that invaded yes. the center of the city. Within a night. And within a night, exactly. Within a night. November 4th. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, and that's when the Opificio delle Pietre Dure became, well, it, it had Not become exactly. in the 1930s. Yes, no? yes. With Ugo Procacci. Precisely. It was okay. also very important right. uh, for one specific re reason that we're very attached to, and the, the community, the international community, is also very attached to, is that he introduced the knowledge of. Uh, scientific research before restoration conservation, uh, meaning that instead of interacting with the object immediately, the object needed to be studied. Right. And the first um, procedure that he had available and that he could use was radiography, radiographs. Radiography, radiographs. 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 And Anyway, so the science so, of restoration yes, that kind of begins the the idea and the um, yes, this idea of a scientific approach is is starts in 1932 with Procacci, yeah. and then what happens in '66 is that the whole of the world community comes to Florence, and we have a huge conservation, you know, conversation. Yes, <laughs> yes, indeed. And indeed. this is how the contemporary restoration begins yeah. and then flourishes everywhere in the world. 
because already in 1930s there were restoration laboratories at the Fogg Museum in Boston, mm -hmm. at the National Gallery in London, and at the Uffizi with the Galleria del Restauro, right. i Gabinetti del Restauro. Right. And, um, but it was, it was, let's say, it became a foremost center yes. to respond yes. to all the needs of the flood. Yes, in 66. Mm -hmm. yeah. Simona, yes. I want. I mean, I, I so, hear this, this, this yes. scraping, right? I want to understand a little bit so, more. I don't know if I can show you this or yeah. if it's good for the cameras. Otherwise, yeah. I'll switch. Let me off. just move this way. because. So this is a, a miniature. It's a codex of late 1300, and uh, on parchment, so on animal skin, uh, it'd be probably sheep skin. We are not so sure if it's an adult animal or young animal. It's quite thick, very different from paper. Uh, you can actually see the follicles um, of the fur of the animal. Mm. And the surface is very, um, uh, how can I say, leash? It's very smooth. Smooth. Yeah. And so the painting is very refined, precise, and miniature-like, and it's quite extraordinary. So this is, this is speaking about pigments, because yes. when you were saying that you have to study a work, yes. one of the most important things yes. is the materials, sure. right? And so in terms of pigments, if we look at the blue here, we're looking at the gold, are we looking at lap lapis lazuli, or are we looking at a I'm different I'm not, sure, not sure, Georgia. Azzurrite. 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 So is azzurrite made from lapis lazuli? Uh, no. no. Less precious. Yes. Less precious, yes. I'm sorry, we're, we're making yes. you talk. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, <laughs> but Simona, I just... And gold. And gold, okay. And this was originally from the community in the Church of Santo Spirito yes, in, in Florence? Florence. It is, okay. indeed. Okay. And this part that we're showing you today is dedicated to women saints. This is Maddalena Penitente. Yeah. You can see the Maddalena. with her hair and we can actually see how thin and unique are these brush strokes. We imagine that the brush must have had one or two hairs and we can carry on to this which is dedicated to all the women saints with its laude, with its Praises, Songs, yes. praise, yeah. written underneath. Oh. So, Simona, you chose this particular uh, codex, it's exceptional. right? Because you know that Calliope works to uncover the contributions of women in history. Yes. So, here we're remembering the contributions of holy women, no, yes, or pious we women. Are. Even yeah. though painted by men, because <laughs> this is men <laughs> yes. used to be miniatures, but uh, miniaturists. Um, yes, it's quite extraordinary to have so many images of women saints. Yeah, let's just finish our this tour. This is also an incredible. Is this an enunciation? This is for no, it's not. No, it's um, uh, omaggio alla Madonna. It's an homage to the Madonna. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know if I can move to my right. There you go. But it's in the vulgar language, you were saying. It is, which is quite unique because it used to be written in Latin. Um, but we already see at the late of the 1300 also with Dante. Yes. And the vulgarization of, uh, of our language and the... the uh, of the Florentine dialect. Of the Florentine no. dialect, which yeah. is uh, Italian. The origin, exactly. Of Italian. Exactly. Yes. So, Simona, thank you so much for this trip uh, through the 1300s. I, I, we're now reaching the, the key of the program, 
uh, which is a look at Maria Luisa Raggi's works from the Civic Museum in Prato. And I'm really excited to have a to have a look at these miniatures. I yes. know there are, there are more than 80 yes. uh, that she produced in her lifetime. Um, yes, she was quite um, quite a painter. Yes, in all respects, um, it's quite unique for us to have. Uh, so we have been working on 21 pieces all in all. Uh, and it's a long-term project mm. uh, for our institute that started in 2016. Okay. And uh, these 21 um, temperas uh, come from the Museo Civico di Prato. Yes. Which is a city next to Florence. And um, the exceptionality of this collection is that uh, it's actually its attribution. It's an attribution, exactly. To Maria Luigia Raggi. Yes. Uh, which is actually very new. It yes. dates back to uh, 2012. Yeah, and I just want to um, do a shout out on that point yes. to Consuelo Lollobrigida, because it was Consuelo Lollobrigida who, to her. who really developed the first monograph and these attributions. Um, I had a was I was able to have a conversation with her before oh. uh, before restoration conversations. Oh, this so is fantastic! So she could give me some ideas. Never meet her. Um, yes. Yeah, I'll have to put you in touch. Please. But, but yes. um, I've studied her catalog yes. many times. Wonderful catalog. Yes. Um, Maria Luisa Raggi was a Genovese artist, an yes. artist from Genova. But these works are Rome inspired. So, what can you tell us? What in terms of um, style, you say they're tempera works. I see some are canvas-like, but this is still paper, no? Yes, the particularity of this, uh, I, we can actually talk just about these 21 works that we have studied, but we have looked into the rest of her work, mm -hmm. and um, she used tempera. Yes. And she used tempera on paper, and on rare occasion on parchment. Okay. Um, and the formats she chose were uh, quite small. These are actually the two biggest ones. Okay, um, why don't we take a step that way? Yes. And then we would have smaller formats. And um, another format that I will, I will take you uh, to later, an oval one. <clears throat> And um, so the, the particularity of this uh, work is that she was actually a nun uh, working in a monastery, um, Monastero di Clausura. Yeah, it was a so cloistered monastery. A cloistered monastery yes. in Genoa. Yes. Next to her birth house, uh, actually financed by her family, which was a, a, a very important noble Genoese family of uh, the 1700s. Yes. She was born in 1742. Right. And she, she died in 1813. No? Yes. So it was she actually that, lived quite a, a long life, a long if we life. can say, uh, for those times and that condition, because we can just imagine that she didn't have any heating or proper, yes, well, yeah. adjustments in adjustments. her cells. So we may think that the small formats are also because she must have um, started her work at the monastery. Yeah. And then something happens. Something happened means she <laughs> ran away. She runs away. Yeah. She does. She escapes from the monastery. She does. She does. Okay. And she travels to Rome yes. to visit an yeah. uncle. Yes. Right? She travels to Rome. Yeah. Um, you have a lot of um, different... Art, ruins and artifacts, etc. And in this period, and we think it's the 1780s, where she's in Rome, possibly, Consuelo was telling me, possibly five years. It's not 100%. We're not so sure. We think two years, but yeah. maybe five. We yeah. don't even know how she escaped. Yes. But uh, yes. which we're very intrigued about this Very part. intrigued. Um, and, and she responded. And happy for her. Happy, exactly. <laughs> Probably, exactly. as women. Um, she was able in some way to 
tune into the tastes of the grand tourists. And if you're thinking, for example, from the 1750s onward, and we can think of examples in the period the set of, of the 1700s, Angelica Kaufman or sure. um, Rosalba Carriera, for mm. example. Yes. Right? But, but she's really looking at landscape and looking at these pastoral scenes and and all of them they're just they're just lovely and and francesco i'd ask you if you could just go really close up so that you can get a sense of you have a bathing scene and here's the dog and those are the the sheep here and it's almost like um reminiscent of the Latin poets and the whole idea of yes of the, nature of nature yeah. yes yeah. nature and humans blending in in a real scene of life mm. um, but it's very idyllic it is it is beautifully mm -hmm. Id idyllic yes yes so this this lady here right who in some way is a protagonist of the of the painting she actually is and she's running away we think that she is dancing but she actually is running away because she has been stung bitten by a snake which one can find just here and they're trying to and they're trying the, the peasants that are working the land will probably have brought their um, uh, th these are not sheep, the goats. Um, they're trying to kill the, the snake, and the, all, the dog is barking, and he, mm. he's quite a big dog. And she is, she's running away. She's, she's as if she was dancing the tarantella. Yes, <laughs> and, yes. And, and the scene continues, and there is a, a church, uh, a Gothic church, and some ruins, and it continues in the background. Uh, very far off, very, very far off. And the more we look at it, and we, the more we can find mm. stories carrying on. And even here, there's a road that turns around this beautifully painted little hill with mm. sheep this time. And she's resting on, a, on an ancient column, probably. And these are... Uh, Barolief, Bassorilievi. Uh, oh, this, they're base reliefs yes, of the wall. I think so. Yeah, like you know? nymphs. Yes, mm. yes. Yeah. And then these leaves are just, and flowers. I mean, she was able to create um, with just very immediate uh, brush strokes um, a whole sense of gentleness but also of reality, because this is probably how people lived at the time. Yeah. Blending in with the nature, which was very, very Arcadian. And Arcadian, exactly. Yes, Arcadian. And, and Arcadia, the, the founding, particularly in Rome, of yes. artists and yes. poets. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, literature and this idea of this idyllic world. And I think just for our guests to imagine what, on some level, she's responding to. On the one hand, you have, you know, consider that you had the Industrial Revolution in England. And so there was a loss of this type of lifestyle. Precisely. And then right after that, you had the French Revolution. And so ancient um, ways of life really gave way to the modern world. And so this whole idea of the capriccio or this this gentle, you said the word gentle, yes, this gentle, gentle really. kind of, of um, tempera works, you know, mm. that, that is reminiscent of a time that was no more. Yes, you know, yes. Even in the time that she was painting it. But certainly, uh, we do have, and this is something that Consuelo Brigida really worked on, is where her works exist or where they were sold. And there were a lot of English collectors. Yes, who, because there was the Grand Tour yeah. uh, fashion at the time. And yeah. all noblemen and 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 sirs yes. would come uh, and start off this grand tour of the Mediterranean, starting off from Rome mm. and going further down into the north of 
uh, the south of the Mediterranean, even the north shores of Africa. Yeah. And um, yes, and they would immerse themselves in the ancient ruins that Roman was so rich of um, that we actually can benefit of today. Yes, yes, still. which actually gives us such romantic. I know uh, it still has its effect, <laughs> doesn't it? Now, now I, I want to see all of her works and have this um, possibility. But while we're looking, uh, this is a scene from autumn, and you can see the yes, because the grape um, harvest. Aside from the capricci, she also painted in smaller a lot of scenes from everyday's life and linked mm. to nature mm. and and the four seasons. And here yeah. we have two. We have yeah. the summer. With this one's the, summer. Yes. Okay. With the. Um, uh, this is not the harvest. Yes. This is the harvest, harvest. Of, the, of the wheat. Yes. Yes. And uh, which was very uh, recurrent. Yeah. And but but extremely beautiful. And actually. I have to say that one of the particular ways that um, Maria Luigia had to work and that was later on developed, um, she must have seen it somewhere, was that she put more um, a binder in her tones of dark. Okay, we don't know what that means. So I don't know if we can manage with the camera, but if we take a raking light image, for example, of this. Um, drawing maybe I don't know if it's better from the other side we can, can actually you, can see you, can we have Letizia hold it up and you show us yeah. can you actually see in raking light in raking light all of these lines I don't know I hope you do Otherwise, you're all invited. <laughs> you we're all invited here in the fortress. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, it's actually some parts are very shiny, glossy. Yeah. And these are all the parts that she intended for us to see more clearly. Yeah. And they're almost relief. No. They are. They are, but they're not relief of paint. Yeah. They're really a relief of. A kind of um, varnish, which isn't varnish, it's the binder that is used to produce her tempera. I but I will show you how to how they used to make temperas later on. Yes, we, no, will, we will see it. I, I definitely yes. want to see. Why don't you show us a little bit about this other format that you were referencing, right? Here we have. Um, her capriccio works, but it's an oval shape. Yes, and she started making oval shapes, which were also a la mode. Okay. And um, of scenes of capricci again. Mm -hmm. So we go again into the Arcadia, the Grand Tour. Well, this is very the, clear. The theme is, this in is, this particular this is one beautiful. is really clear. Yes, there's even a soldier in Roman style overlooking a pond and um, with two with with this peasant holding his um, you know um, a battle um, um, it's like a staff yes huh? yeah with with a point with a sh sharp edge and but then we have another scene I don't know if we can see it and again it's it's the, the view and the Horizon is goes, you know, into other scenes and other buildings. Something that Consuelo said was that this was really her mental freedom. So in a cloistered monastery, through art, she was able somehow yes. to yes. achieve, yes, you know, an expanse. Yes, because we imagine her uh, being a very well-educated woman. Mm. Woman. Mm. And we actually know that she entered the Covento as a student when she was age seven. Oh my goodness. And, uh, and she took the votes uh, when she was 16 in 1760. But because of this uncle who lived in Rome, who was close to the 
to to the um, uh, church and um, and quite powerful uh, this yeah. palazzo in near Via del Corso mm. and who did have no children um, because of him and him sending her presents and we think that she must have started painting uh, before escaping to Rome yes. as a means of surviving. I see. Um, and, 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 and so this is why it's also so rich because she was very educated. In a frame mm. like this one, Simona, she's copying the the frame maker. It's very was interesting. Yes. Trying to, in some way, copy. Yes. What because, she had created yes. in terms of a frame. Yes, because she. So we think that these, if I can show you, uh, uh, so there are temperas on paper. I'm going to show you the verso. You can see all the brown dots there from the old um, paste that was used to mount them. They were all mounted on wooden boards um, and then fixed inside um, uh, these frames, uh, golden frames. And But we think that they have been probably trimmed. They must have been a bit larger because mm. the oval we can suppose that the oval must have been complete. Yes. And she adorned them because she didn't have frames in her cell. She, it, was, it was rich but poor. Mm -hmm. So she cr also created a mise-en-scene finale, right. if we can say. Right. And so when they were later on ac acquired, um, we think that the collector um, decided to frame them and respect um, respected her her idea mm. of having a motive around mm. and so produced a frame with floral you know motives all around but in gold interesting yeah so so what is this made of ah, this is something is it this is something very contemporary yeah so very light can I feel it yes gosh Yes, it's very light. So this is this is technology today. Um, technology today makes us um, um, more efficient. Hmm. And but what is the makeup? So basically, uh, because we know the design, mm -hmm. uh, we are able to recreate the missing parts of the design, and. Uh, in order to um, avoid materials that could interact. We can choose materials that are neutral, mm. um, like this, was, which is a resin. And we started using resins in restoration uh, in the 90s, and the resins would be coming from um, the orthodontist world. Really? Yes. Dentistry, yes. orthodontist. Actually, you know, Amazing. conservation used a lot of uh, inactive material coming from the pharmaceutical world, mm. the uh, food industry, yeah. and then the medical world also. But this is a specific resin, which I forget the name today. Interesting. It's not my work. So we have a special um, restorer that knows how to work with 3D printers mm. and this special material. And we um, designed the um, we designed the piece. So by reproducing it. Mm. Wait, let them let them see. Let the camera capture this. Yeah, and then we gave the drawings to our uh, colleague who transformed them in a um, in a digital um, language for the printer for the three D printer. Yeah. So, and I'm going to take you. I'm going to lead you this way because I see something interesting happening yes, over here. This is another um, side, much more yeah. original We're in all senses. restoration in action, right? We are, we are. This is actually Selene again, who Hi is, again. <laughs> who is, I can probably 
give her my microphone. Sure, sure. Would you like? Oh, yeah, sure. And rest you my have voice. Your, you have your hands busy. Uh, I am good to come. Yeah, why don't, yeah, you, why don't you help her? <laughs> help her. And she can tell us what's happening here. Yes. I see some eggs. Yeah, um, so right now I'm uh, recreating one of the older recipes uh, that uh, were made uh, in, the seven, in, the, in the 19th century, which was actually made uh, even uh, farther uh, in the uh, 14th century. Uh, this is a recipe by Cennino Cennini. Mm -hmm. We're making it because uh, we think uh, uh, that the binder of this kind of tempera is the same one that uh, was uh, used for the Marchioni uh, painting that so, we, we saw before. Okay, so the one that was a stone painting yeah. work. Yeah, right? exactly. Okay. Yeah. So right now I am grinding um, a pigment mm -hmm. to make it thinner. Uh, with uh, some water yeah. and after that um, I'm going to put uh, the binder with it um, which is the yolk of an egg okay. and uh, mix it together Okay. and after that we'll put uh, even more water uh, as we like to make it liquid and that's that's actually just the recipe. It's easy. It's pretty easy. Yeah. So it's so this egg recipe was a recipe from the 1400s. Yeah. Right. And Cennini was the the person to look at. Right? Yeah. Exactly. The maestro. The maestro. Yeah. And egg was the binding agent inside of the of, of the painting. Yeah. Inside the paint. Yeah. Inside the paint. Yeah. Okay. One of. One. One, one, of, one of the many that you, they could use. Okay. They could use the entire egg, just the white, just the red, or other binders like uh, animal glue and uh, even others. Okay. So, so then I, I see some different pigments here. Yeah. Right? And this one is particularly beautiful. Yeah. And I, I'd like, I don't know if Francesco, you're getting these pigments, but so you create these paints to then use on works like the ones we were just looking at? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, interesting. Interesting. And this, you're going to put more water here? or? Yeah, I'm actually going to put uh, the yolk okay. now. Uh, you haven't put it yet. No, ah, I, I just see. mixed it yeah. uh, with, uh, with water to okay. make it uh, thinner. So it's one part? One part, one part, yeah. So one part pigment. Yeah, it's the same quantity of pigment and uh, yolk. Okay. And uh, now I'm going to mix it. And you've been grinding the pigment with the with this glass mm -hmm. instrument. Yeah, with this one. amazing you don't <laughs> you think that today we would have a different system <laughs> we don't <laughs> <laughs> but you use I mean, apparently you just showed me something where you know state of the art technology is used as a material yes. and here we are back with eggs yes, we, uh, yes, right yes well the the, the fantastic um, possibility I'm gonna stand next yes to you. Um, Actually, this is what's so magical about this institute, um, is that we can go back in time and uh, enter all of the methods that have been studied and learned mm. and recreate them and understand how the different artists would work. Mm. And Selene is doing this because she needs to test some consolidants for them in order to apply them to the big object that we saw at the beginning, which has this flaking pigment Yes, problem. yes. So we cannot go directly on the work of art. We need to create the situation beforehand, exactly to the then, same. To then match then, the, the yes, layers, the yes. rips, correct the tears. No, not no. at all. She, it's, it's, it's a very interesting process. We need to reproduce the exact object so that we can use the reproduced object as a kobai, as a 
experiment object. As a guinea pig. As a guinea pig, precisely. So we have all of this new nanoparticle technology, you know, yeah. that we need to test. And it's all this very, like, like a 3D printer. We need to go forward with this technology, but we can't do it on the real object before we're actually sure. 100%. I see. I see. So she has to make all of the colors that were on, in the palette of the painter, Marcioni, mm. who did her painting. Wow. Well, congratulations. It's Thank like you. being a chef. Yeah. A chef a at bit, the Opificio. Yeah. <laughs> Simona, would you take me into the textile? Yes. I just want to spend a couple of minutes. Um, I with have. Julia. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In the textile section, we've looked at paper until now, um, but now we're going to go in and talk with Guya, who is a senior restorer, senior conservator here in the textile section. So yes, this is the second. A department that we have here on the first floor of the Fortezza and we're um, one alongside the other okay. and uh, this is also one of the best ideas of our institute that we can actually interact yes. with the different departments so I will introduce Guya yes Hi. please hello. hello and I will put on oops, the microphone Thank you. Yes. And I will come I'm going to come. I'm, thank you, Simona. You can thank come you. for the questions yes. after. So, Guya, hello. Hi. Hello. Uh, you have a, a, a quiet sector yeah. this afternoon. Yeah, yeah, this afternoon. I'm alone. You're alone. <laughs> so, you're alone, but with treasures. Yeah. Okay. So, we are working on a very special collection coming from Naples. So, it's... Uh, the collection of the uh, golden threads so they are ribbon uh, here you can see some of those pieces and are completely in uh, gold so these, this is from Pompeii Pompeii or Ercolano we Ercolano. don't know okay. exactly so okay. from the Vesuvian area interesting so, so the Opificio has works from all over Italy and from the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah? It, it happens. So okay. we are we have pieces from sometime from Milan, Florence, or uh, Siena, from the Tuscany or other uh, region. So from the Sicily. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, and here we have gold, and these are these are ribbons, and and you're certain that it's gold. Uh, we have just studied one piece in, in the past for uh, a thesis, so it was completely gold, pure gold, 99%. So okay. uh, we can say that it's completely gold and it's a, a part of the same collection. So we, we, we think it's probably completely gold and we have to, to study and to, to do the analysis. And this is a most important part of this uh, project. It was a study of the collection, so here you can see just a part of it. So this is the diagnostics? Yeah. For now? For now. Okay. And then we do uh, cleaning, so okay. we have to remove the part that are not of the piece, and then we have to, to build some little boxes, not uh, just uh, in, in the way you can see here, but yeah. proper boxes for, for the storage and exhibition. Yeah. So it would be like something that's possibly that keeps the dirt out for one temperature control. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So they have to to put in a special case with uh, the control of temperature and uh, humidity. Yeah. And because uh, right now they are in a special place in the museum, close to the public, and they are not uh, exhibited uh, until now. They were not exhibited. So this will be the first time. Mm -hmm. So it's a very and a project like this one, what is the time frame? Ah, the time frame. Uh, we have a, a, a person here working on this project with me. He's uh, specialized in metal uh, yeah. conservation because yeah. we don't know if there is organic material. So the, uh, right now we know there is just gold. And uh, the time is at least six months, maybe a bit more. Okay. Okay. It's interesting. 
But I know this isn't your first love. Yeah. Gold is not your first love. Yeah. Okay. So why don't you take us over to uh, on where things table. are happening over here, right? On this table, we have uh, another uh, little core from Bardini Museum. Uh, so another museum in Florence, uh, that it, which is collect uh, leather. So those are fragments that come from wool, um, wool hanging. So wall hangings. So pieces okay. of leather that uh, decorated the, the walls. So these are a precursor to wallpaper. Yeah, absolutely. So they are about uh, uh, from the uh, 16th or uh, 17th century. The wallpaper is later. It is realized in the 18th century. I'm not sure about the, the exact yeah, period, but, but yeah. a bit later. So, Guia, I'm looking at this and I'd invite the camera to come and, and, and because it's it's stamped, no? It's engraved almost. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, this technique uh, was realized with those called punches, mm -hmm. like in the painting technique, yeah. uh, painted. And uh, underneath there is a thin layer of silver. Usually there is silver. And then this yellow varnish, similar to gold, but not gold. So, so these are pieces from the Museo Bardini. Not Museo, uh, collection. The collection, the Bardini collection. Galleria Mozzi Bardini. Okay, but Stefano Bardini. Yeah, absolutely, right? Stefano Bardini. Which we know as the very important collector in the 1900s yeah. in Florence who, who revolutionized collecting. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, definitely, and, and uh, so why, why leather? Why, you told me off camera, leather's your first love. So <laughs> to tell us what we need to know from that uh, point of view. Yeah, Bardini collected every kind of object so he was very eclectic yeah. and very interested in uh, applied arts. Yes. So not, all, not only the main so painting, sculpture, but also textile, carpets, yes. so leather yeah. uh, was uh, very important for him. So he had a huge collection, thousands of pieces, a thousand century. So there are a lot, yeah. a lot of pieces. But these are for students to work on yeah. because they're scraps. Absolutely. Those okay. are fragments and the students are studying the better condition and the better methods of cleaning and yeah. how to preserve them. So what, what is the key element of preservation? Uh, it's to be uh, respectful of the object, so to understand uh, the better way, because yeah. every time it's different. So every time we have to understand which is a problem, the main problem. That's it, right? You have to identify the problem. Yeah. It's like, it's like a doctor. Yeah. Right? You have to diagnose Absolutely. A, a piece in this yeah, case. Yeah. We have to yeah. understand them. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm really happy to have had the opportunity to, to see a little bit of textile. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, I think it's, it's, a, it's an area that we don't talk about sufficiently. Yeah. Uh, but I do think it's important for those who are interested in restoration and restoration conversations Absolutely. to also think about um, not just paintings, not yeah. just panels, but also paper and, and, and textiles. So yeah. thank you really so You're much um, to for this possibility. And I know that um, we may have some questions from the audience. And so I'm going to just get my phone really quick and we'll call Simona back. Um, you want to come and, and stand with yes. us and, and why don't we stand let's go stand by that table over there so they can see some uh, a little bit of while we do our question answers let's see what arrived right uh, excuse me just one second while I while I find sure Okay. All right. So we have a couple of questions here. Letizia. <laughs> There's actually one for you. It I have the first one for you. <laughs> okay. So here we have. Um, 
what is the significance of watermark on paper? Okay, what information <laughs> does it provide? Uh, what does the watermark tell us? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's a difficult so it's a one. Yes. Well, yeah. yes and no, meaning that it was a trademark. Ah. Oh, sorry. Oh, yes. no. Yeah, you can just, if you could just maybe hold it for this this part. Just okay. hold it and yes, pass yes. it. Thank you. So it 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 used to be. It started as a trademark. I don't know if it's what it's an English word and it's the correct word. But each master, uh, mastro cartaio, paper maker, yeah, master paper, paper maker, maker uh, would uh, uh, sew on the mold. Um, to rec so that his uh, product would be recognized as coming from his mill. Right. right. So this is actually what it is. And it started off in a very simple way, beautiful, small circles mm. or... Um, Animal, animals, yes. yes. So like or a little symbol. symbol. And symbols. And okay. then it became something, you know, very elaborate yeah. but you actually come from the city of yes. Fabriano <laughs> you come from Fabriano and, yeah. and where they make paper uh, yes yes, yes. Okay. the city of paper yeah and is that why you became a paper restorer or no no <laughs> no <laughs> I have to tell you I, I'm so happy right now to be with these women because restoration I want you to remember in Italy particularly is a woman's field and this Today. is this is definitely the case post 1966 so um, you know together as a representative of Calliope Arts in this case yes. you know I'm very very happy to um, bring light to your field which um, women you know this idea of painstakingly uh, you know facing art protecting it rescuing it etc is, is so important uh, next question let's see not for me not for not you for I me. promise Thank okay you. <laughs> uh, is the Opificio still restoring works that were damaged by the 1966 flood it is I actually had something back which I couldn't uh, propose to you directly because um, it comes from an institute which is not our institute yeah. so uh, but um, yes uh, it has yeah. and I worked uh, recently on an oil painting on paper uh, which belongs to the Galleria di Arte Moderna of Pitti uh, Palace and um, it was covered in mud. It had between uh, 0 0.5 and 1.2 millimeters of mud in certain areas and a tremendous um, cut and hole in the middle of it uh, because it had probably been carried by the mud and had smashed into uh, something. And uh, it's actually quite interesting the technique was thought to be a tempera because it was covered by mud mm. we couldn't couldn't understand what and, it was and you discovered it was oil and we discovered it was oil and we discovered the author which was given as an anonymous author yeah. so this very is, interesting this is going back to ugo procacci right it if is, you do the diagnosis it is, it is. of course and if we you did bring the science in we then did you, you come up with new research yes yeah yes. really important yes Really important. Let's see. Will Maria Luisa Raggi's works be exhibited together at the museum in Prato after the conservation process? This is the million dollar question. For sure. We yeah. hope that she will yeah. uh, be uh, in a beautiful exhibition uh, when finally we can talk about Maria Raggi being the author of these 21 pieces yeah. and plus the many more around the world and I think that all of these collectors especially in England or America will be thrilled um, to understand what luck they have that 
uh, yes. you know, that finally she's undiscovered, uh, being unveiled, rediscovered, yes. unveiled, yes. which is... The other question I saw here was how Consuelo Lolo Brigida, the art historian who discovered so many works by Maria Luisa, Luisa Raggi, discovered them. So I don't know if you know that story um, or... No, I don't yeah. actually. Well, I, I, I talked with her. I, I'll, I'll answer the question if you don't mind. No, please do. <laughs> um, <laughs> she, she was working in an um, antique shop. She yes. was working in an antique shop, and there were four works that, that were known to be uh, by um, Maria Luisa Raggi. And these works came, you know, under her, in her hands, essentially, and were attributed to other unknown painters, you know, mm. of Capriccio or mm. unknown painters of mm. Roman ruins, etc. And so she began doing her. Um, you know, very in-depth study, but but it's just it is really a lesson that there's so much more to learn uh, from an art history perspective. Yes, know, and, yes, and particularly when, as far as women artists are concerned. So, yes. well, I want to thank you so much. Thank and, you, Linda. Uh, thank you very been much. Wonderful. It's been a pleasure. I want to thank uh, first and foremost Calliope Arts for this opportunity. Uh, I want to thank the Florentine, our media partner, and Bunker Film. Uh, you saw our, our photographers and our filmmakers uh, together with us today so that they could get as close as possible to the works. But it's really, really a privilege. And, 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 and thanks as well to the various institutions who let us film the works, the Fondazione Longhi, and the Biblioteca Nazionale, and, and the Museo of, of, Prato. of Prato, the Civic Museum of Prato, and also your wonderful museum, which is the Opificio de Pietra Dura. Yes. So uh, we'll see you next time at Restoration Conversations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye.